Bash. Look at that. Oh, I'm happy to see everybody made it. Oh, I, can't, I, can't see you. I, can't, I can't see anybody, so I'll be honest. This is the NJ. Oh my gosh. So how you guys doing, alright? How many people you run off the road to get here in the snow? These MTCs, right? Guys, thanks a lot for coming and hanging out with us tonight. I know you really you had to deal with the weather and everything, and we greatly appreciate you coming and spending time with us. It means everything to us. Thank you. All right, so how many of you know the show Ghost Hunters? All right, how many people like the show Ghost Hunters? That'll make it an easy evening for us, okay. Well, we like to have fun, so hopefully you can all bear with us and we'll take one step at a time. All right. Picture's obnoxious, let's get rid of it. Okay. All right. Disclaimer, guys, we deal with California, LA, so we gotta have this. We gotta cover our butts, you know? Go ahead, man. Because paranormal activity is not supported by conventional scientists nor by specialists, we are not the Very good. So, pretty much saying we're doing the best we can. So, all right, I, I don't think these laser pointers really work here. Uh, Anti-laser zone. Oh, there it is. <laughs> all right, moving on. Who the heck are we? It's a logical question, right? I'm so loud. <laughs> I'm Jason Hawes, that's Grant Wilson. Hooray, we have our names. <laughs> Parents named us. We're proud parents. So. Yes. Between us, we have seven other children. I, 72 I only have three. Jay has a lot more. So. <laughs> I was always told to be good at something, stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to be banned before we even start. We're plumbers from Rhode Island. Yes, we are. It's not just for TV. <laughs> yeah! Plumbing, protecting the health of the nation. <laughs> Uh, what? Moving on. Alright, we've been investigating the paranormal for over 20 years. And uh, I think that that tells a lot about us and TAPS and everything else. Uh, TAPS is not a group of people who, who were put together by a production company to make a show. We were a group that was existing that a production company, numerous production companies, offered a show. And uh, we ended up turning it down about five times. But the nice thing is that we're a big family. They can't change who's on our crew, they can't tell us who's on our crew, or anything like that, because we're an existing group. So, so there. <laughs> so, uh, now, who the heck are we? Who are we not? This is just a valid question. Let's see. We're not doctors or scientists. A lot of people come to us and say, I love the scientific approach you take. And we're like, mm, the common we sense. just use common sense. The little we got. We don't have any degrees in this stuff, and we don't. We didn't buy any online degrees or anything like that. I, we're just dudes. We're just dudes. We're, we're not psychic haters, but uh, if you're a psychic, you already knew that. <laughs> when you're psychic, because they all laugh. They didn't know you were going to say that. That's good. No, we don't hate psychics. We work with psychics, but we just found that a lot of people who think they're psychic really are. They're just good guessers or gypsies or something like that. <laughs> they're tapped into a higher power. All right. All right. We're not professional public speakers, guys, so uh, we're going to screw up. Just accept it. Please write this one down for further reference later in the night, okay? All right. Now, a lot of people ask, how do you get your cases? You know, how do you decide which ones to, to visit, which ones to go to? And honestly, a lot of that relies on our wonderful organization and network we set up around the globe called the TAPS Family. Well, let alone the TAPS website. Last year alone, the TAPS website received, and this is just till September, right? It was 93 million hits. So, 
So long before the show, we were receiving on average about 30,000 hits a day from all around the world. So That's an expensive jump. So we get, yeah, it was cheap, yeah, it was. <laughs> so, uh, so we get on an, an average of about 1,000 to 1,500 emails a day of case requests. And we've got the TAPS family all over the country, well, all over the world, I should say. This is our secret. We have TAPS families, which are groups that we trust. It's over 76 groups in the USA, and then over 21 groups around the globe, and that's growing week by week, month by month. And uh, that's how we're able to get to all the cases that we can't do. They come to us. Um, well, I'll show you the process, so uh, All right, here's a case load. Like Jay said, lots of it. 1,500 emails a day. Okay, so here comes the email. We get this question all the time. You guys can fall asleep if you want, but if you're interested, yes. <laughs> It goes through a whole team of case managers who vet them out. Uh, do they just need a call? Do they need an email? Or do we need to go out there? And then they get sorted into cool little envelopes that get labeled <laughs> to different places. And uh, we move on to the next slide. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, which cases do we do? Uh, first question, does it involve small children? Obviously, if a kid is, is scared, then there's a parent who's scared, and we need to take care of those. It that jumps to the front of the list. How terrified is the client? It's really important to us. If they're just like, yeah, well, something's in the house, yeah, whatever. But, you know, then you've got somebody who's truly terrified to walk from room to room, and we want to go to that case. Now, no, notice where that is on the list, okay? It, it doesn't matter if it's paranormal or not. If they're terrified, they need to be helped. <laughs> How severe is the activity? I don't know. How severe is it? How often does the activity occur? How recent was the last claim? And most importantly, how good are the snacks they have brought? <laughs> Do they, yeah, this, this one. <laughs> we go to, we pull up to this one house. Now, Steve's car is already there. Whatever. So we're, we're waiting for everybody else. Everybody gets there. Nobody knows where Steve is. Finally, we're like, well, we can't wait any longer. We go up, we knock on the client's door. She opens it up. She's like, oh, come on in. Steve's been eating these. <laughs> Steve's at the table. She's made this huge kettle of meatballs and pasta. And, and Steve is just going to town on it. Sauce all over his face. What's up, guys? Starving. That's what's up. We don't charge for investigations. We don't do any of that. So food is always welcome. Okay. Now, Jay's going to break down the different types of hauntings. I'm going to break uh, it down. Out. Break it down. You want to break down old school? <laughs> no, I'm not yes. Stick to the plumbing. Anyways, move on. Just embarrass myself majorly. All right. All right, guys. We look at human type haunts as there's three different types. There's intelligent residual poltergeist. An intelligent type haunt is like one of us after we pass. It's uh, we're trying to communicate. It's the pulling on the covers, the, uh, the calling out the name, trying to let that person know we're there for whatever reason. And a lot of times you can communicate with them. Hey, sometimes you can get them to move on or find out why they're there. All right. Your residual type haunt. Think of it like a tape player rewinding and playing itself over and over again. It always seems to be the same type of activity in the same location uh, around the same time, whether it's once a, once a day, once a month, once a year, but it's always the, the sound of the doorknob, the, uh, the footsteps down the hallway, things of that nature. And we find a lot of these cases, it, well, it appears to be the energy trapped within an object that makes up the home. A lot of times people all of a sudden start experiencing things when they bought something at a flea market, a yard sale, maybe an old piece of furniture, something like that. You gotta remove the object from the house, and the problem stops. Now, poltergeist is basically any case where you get sucked into a TV or eaten by a tree. This house is key. People come out covered in big slime, it's just wrong. Some weird crap. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, what we found with poltergeist is usually it's uh, a child manifesting the activity themselves. It's usually a female child. And uh, they, what we've also found is a lot of times it's near high limestone deposit areas. For whatever reason, this seems to help fuel the activity. So, crazy the child from the house, the problem stops. <laughs> Imagine that, right? But yeah. Okay, right, inhuman. Now, people automatically assume when they hear inhuman, they think demonic. 
because that's every friggin' movie Hollywood puts out. But it's not. Uh, elementals, little nature type spirits fall under a human. Uh, angelics, incubus, succubus, no sexual predators. Hey, yeah, she just woke up. I saw that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you summon them? I'll take two. What? Take two. But <clears throat> I'll be honest, 99% 99 of those cases turn out to be nothing but overactive imaginations, uh, under-medicated people, sometimes over-medicated people. <laughs> but we do a lot of cases that are not aired on television for, for numerous churches where we get called in to do preliminary investigations on uh, self-proclaimed possessions and uh, negative effect haunts. And I'll be honest with you, we write up endless reports and very rarely do we ever see anything. Okay. Okay, class, moving along. Okay, studies. All right, this part's fun, guys. This is, uh, these are actual TAPS cases, and we're going to tell you what the client was claiming they were experiencing, what we experienced, and we want to we want to involve you. We want to get your take on what you guys think it might it might be. We're entirely too tired of you guys being way too passive on your couches. You've studied long enough. It's time to take the test. You ready? Here's up for this. Uh, if we could dim the lights a little, a little clip of Amy you know, Rooney, who is oh, yeah. a TAPS member. So you watch this clip, well, and if she can pass the test, you well, guys... Well, the best part is we'll keep on playing. We've got a bunch of little videos, and so we'll throw little ones in here and there. So. Okay, now this is Amy, and she's in uh, one of the uh, van, and uh, she apparently can't get out of the seatbelt. <laughs> hey, Amy, why don't you come on and join us? <laughs> Amy, can't you come on and join us? Clients claim his dog barks at ghosts in one corner of the bedroom ceiling. Okay. <laughs> Client's dog won't go in basement. Yeah. Smart dog. <laughs> Client hears things moving in the attic. Taps experiences all of this. Whoa, okay, what's going on here? Any guesses on what this could be? Mice? Mice. Raccoons? Raccoons. Okay, so various animals, before we list every animal there is. Deer. Say it, wait, up top, what'd you say? The dog can't do stairs. Dog can't do stairs, got arthritis in his hips. <laughs> <laughs> that crap ain't funny. <laughs> Alright, you guys wanna see what it is? Alright. Okay, survey says. Taps got the okay to open up the ceiling and were viciously attacked by three chipmunks. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> you've seen these guys? This one is just yeah. me. No. <laughs> Of course it wasn't S3 chipmunks, but they were chipmunks.